when you do something like this long enough and you do the, what we get to do, which is like play and make believe for a living, it's, uh, it's hard to come by humans, like real people that love other humans. Yes. Forgive me if I cry. Wow. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, you're speaking. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just really, really special. Like, you need to understand. My wife read. My wife read your most recent book. Oh really? Wildflower? Yeah, she sure did. She sure did. So she read the book and she loved it. Is it true that you guys met when you were kids? We were nine and thirteen. I mean, that is like out of a movie. <laughs> yeah. It is it, straight up. It's just incredible. Up. Tell yeah. us the love story. Oh, guys, y'all buckle in. <laughs> So we're nine and 13. We're at a dance studio in Birmingham, Alabama. That's where we met and we were kids and we grew up dancing together and singing and, and doing the thing. And then I was working on Hamilton. When was this? 2016. So she came up to see the show. We got dinner and then we got dinner again and then we got lunch. And then we decided that we only wanted to get dinners and lunch with each other. And that was... What was that? I know you have a 10 month old. I have a 10 month old. This is his first talk show. He's here. I don't know where he is. He's over there somewhere. I cannot yeah. stand it. Oh my gosh, that's my that's my best friend right there, man. He it, is uh, Riley, Riley William Fisher. That to me is what sets my joy and my happiness, my like what's innate and lives inside of me apart from everything else. Because it's easy for me to block out the noise when I'm with my family and with with my kid, with my wife. But I think it's important to mention, especially for the sake of this conversation. You know, we were four months pregnant, five months pregnant always wanted to be a dad, knew that I was about to achieve that, that goal and, and take on the biggest and best project of my life with my, my partner and my best friend. And um, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder that I did not know that I had. Um, I just knew that I had reflux and like all of these things that were making it difficult for me to eat and didn't realize that there were all of these traumas from my childhood that I needed to work through in really? therapy. It's really, it's insane. So there in my last couple of months of my contract were very, very difficult physical times for me. This is something that no, like I, I lost 30 pounds. I've actually never talked about this uh, out loud on a platform like this at all. And man, I'm so glad that I made it through that desert because here we are now talking to you. I am so much stronger. Thank God for that. Thank God for them. Yeah. How do you think you became you? Um, my parents, without question. I'm adopted. Got a you really are? got a got a pretty cool story. Um, I'll not shallow for you. We'll 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 have some wine, we'll talk. I would um, love yeah, nothing we'll, more. We will we will we will chat later. True. Um my parents are incredible. They've they've uh, they they have had things happen to them that they've had to navigate that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, yet have shown me nothing but patience and kindness and love, and gave me the opportunity to, as a kid, grow up with a voice and debate when I felt like that was something that I needed to do. If there, if I had a point that I wanted to make, I was never silenced. I was just taught to respectfully allow my voice to be heard. But what that did was it just it. it gave me the practice of listening. And I heard some phrase at some point in time that a fool speaks and a wise man listens. And You know, I, I, I love, you know, like um, tomorrow night, I'm gonna, I love taking the kids to Broadway. Oh, We're gonna come see your show. No I'm so excited, way, are you kidding? Oh my God! And it is a privilege, and it is so lucky. It's getting like rave reviews. It is the hit yeah. that everybody hoped it might be and that nobody wants to make anything that, you know, isn't a success, but this one no. really is. So for me and anyone who is privileged enough to go see Sweeney Todd, what should we be looking out for? <laughs> because this is the show everybody's talking about and I cannot wait. It's a dark comedy. It is a dark comedy. Yes, there's blood, there's a crazy barber shop with a crazy barber in there down the street on Fleet Street, and you want to avoid him at all costs because he is, you know. He gonna get he's, you. Uh, he, he's taking a slice out of life for everybody, understand? <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's so special. Natasha Katz, who's our lighting designer, um, the big challenge here, I think, was not how well she could light the show, but how well she could remove light from the space. She does this so beautifully. It's a thrilling, thrilling piece. If you don't think that you can go to a theater and sit down and be antsy and stressed and thrilled, think again, 
come see Sweeney Todd, Josh Groban, one of the best vocalists Anna of Lee our generation. Annalie Ashford, who I'm also so obsessed She's with. She's a goddess. So if you're not going to Broadway to see Sweeney Todd, you have five million followers on TikTok. <laughs> It's weird, I think, that there are five million people that have tapped a little red button on their phone. Five right? million TikTok followers! It's, it's kind of wild. Will you do a TikTok challenge with us? I'll do a TikTok challenge with you! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>